Hey kids, Sheepdog David Grant here, looking extra scruffy today, just for you. Okay, so I've asked you to help out with the Chalk Skin Payday Kickstarter campaign. A couple of things that I want to talk to you about today. First of all, who are Chalk Skin? What are they all about? Right? Good question. Fair question. Secondly, what can we expect from the Payday album that's coming out? Also, fair question. Okay, first of all, Chalk Skin. They're what I tend to call a character-driven comedy hip-hop group. Okay? Character-driven because it's totally fictional history, characters, uh, narrative-driven comedy hip-hop. Okay, Chalk Skin is made up of MC Chalk Skin, who was a former boy band member, grew up in the OC, named Whitey Mick Chalk Skin. His best friend from childhood, who grew up on the other side of the tracks and went into the Marine Corps while Whitey was in the uh, was in the boy band, they met at a hip hop convention in 1985 and have been doing hip hop ever since. McChalkskin's career went south. DJ Poppin' Fresh, his military career went south. They both were kind of rudderless, and then they ended up running into one another again and recontinuing their hip hop passion together. They've picked up along the way the fan favorite, J-Man, kind of a ladies man, wears his own face on his shirt, right? Pretty cool guy. Uh, and Rich Prophet, the Magi of Rhymes with the Golden Tongue. So that is what Chalkskin's all about. Uh, it's it's family friendly for the most part. I mean, it's pretty edgy. It's PG-13 material, so it's not for real young kids necessarily, although some of the songs won't be offensive to them. But it's, uh, it is pretty edgy material, but it's not putrid. It's not uh, going to have an explicit lyrics uh, um, warning on the, the outside of the album or anything like that. So let me tell you a little bit about what you can expect from the Payday album. First of all, we've worked with some of the greatest producers in the area. We've got Jazz, the Hookmaster Williams. They fly him out to New York. They fly him out to L.A. He's the guy in San Diego, one of the guys that you go to. Um, he's worked with all kinds of, of major acts and all kinds of smaller acts, too. Specializes in R&B and soul, hip-hop, and any kind of music, really. The guy's a, he's a very, very good producer that you go to for that clean sound. Also, if you're familiar with Fresh Donuts, we did the entire first album with a producer named Godson. Godson's amazing. His beats are great. It's one of the reasons why people took us seriously right off the bat. You know, me rapping, kind of a funny concept. Me rapping with those beats and that, you know, precision. Okay, it's something to take us a little bit more seriously. We've run into that incident in a lot of live shows. You know, people are... Who are these guys getting on stage? What, what the heck? This is this is a joke. And then they hear the beat and they just start dancing and they can't help it. Well, Godson was responsible for that sound on the first album. Godson is back for the second album. He's recorded some of our great hits for this album. Uh, we also worked with Dennis D-Man Ingram. If you are familiar with the Sneaker Kings, they did a couple of songs on our first album. Great rock band. Been around since... Uh, Man, late 60s. So they've been around for a long time playing together. Dennis is the bass player for the band, but he also plays on our album. He plays guitar and everything else. But he uh, he produced our Big Bubba Jr. number from this uh, for this album. He was responsible with the other Sneaker Kings for the Big Bubba Jr. song on the first album, as well as the Still Kicking It uh, rock song aspect, uh, Butt Dialed You, and uh, I'm So Angry. So... Uh, you know, he, he ended up producing one of the songs for this album for us. Uh, other producers, we had Hunter Brezen. He's up in uh, in L.A., right on Hollywood Boulevard. How cool is this? It was like two blocks away from Hollywood and Vine. We went up there and we uh, recorded the sketches with Hunter. Hunter's great. Just moved out here from uh, the Midwest. Uh, really excited about having him out here. And then we also had Ultra Kleistron, who is uh, Carl Olson. He just did a beat for uh, MC Lars, and MC Lars was posting up about how awesome this guy was, and so I found him on the old Facebook, wrote him, and uh, he liked what we were doing, so he agreed to do the title track, Payday, for the album Payday. We're really excited about his input there. Great title track. Um, it's really going to set things off in a great way. So those are our producers that we worked with for this album. Um, 
other than that, we have a couple of beats that we did on our own, but uh, still produced in the studio with uh, with the different producers that I just mentioned before. But that's kind of cool. I actually wrote a beat that's on this album. I'm really excited about that. On the first album, I was really intense about uh, the point that I wanted to play at least one instrument on the album. So I played the jaw harp that you hear at Party Round Back. On this album, you know, <laughs> I tried to play the cowbell. That's a little... Uh, difficult to keep on rhythm when you're as uh, pale as I am <laughs> and so I had to hand that over to Dennis. Dennis plays the cowbell beautifully uh, but uh, but I wrote one of the the whole songs you know I have the one of the beats so you know, I'm pretty proud of myself there it's something I didn't think I'd be able to do uh, on our second album and it's it's a pretty cool song people are really liking it um, as far as musicality instrumentation because for me you know Hip-hop can be a bunch of loops. It can be a bunch of uh, synthesized music, and that's fine. That's great. But for me, I really like um, all types of music, and I wanted to bring in a lot of musicality that you're not familiar with in this genre, um, kind of elevate things in a different way for us because, you know, we're not going into this as, as these A-list rappers. Uh, we want to go into it with something different, bringing something new to the table so that we can, you know, have our own opportunity to, to fill a niche that hasn't been filled by anybody else. So for me, instrumentation is really, really important. And for this album, we've brought back everybody from the first album, except for Chase. And it's not any uh, uh, thing about Chase. Just we didn't, we weren't able to work it out. We were emailing back and forth and it just didn't really work out with timing and everything. But you'll you'll hear all the, the familiar instrumentation. So, you know, the Sneaker Kings, Mikey was a little injured. Uh, so Mikey didn't, we didn't have the whole Sneaker Kings, but we brought Dennis back. Dennis plays guitar. He plays lead guitar. He plays rhythm guitar. He plays bass guitar. And then uh, he also played the drum machine. <laughs> and that was actually a little bit more difficult than it sounds. Uh, Dennis did a great job producing that song with us, playing all those different parts. Um, as far as other instrumentation, Yokanon came back. Yokanon Winston, Ph.D., the music doctor. He came back. He played the saxophone and flute for us. Uh, brilliant musician. Yokanon is the best. Uh, great, great guy to work with. Um, fantastic music. And so having him back was kind of a no-brainer. We also had uh, Rama, who played the sitar on the first album. He played it in uh, Peace in the Mideast. Rama came back. He played the sitar for us again, but he also played the, the kodo and the irhu, which are uh, Chinese instruments. You'll hear that in a very special and unique way on the album. I'm really excited about that. Um, we also had uh, his master come in, uh, his tabla master, Rahis Khan, who's world famous. He's a world famous musician that's on this album playing the tabla. And uh, fantastic job that he did. Thanks to, to Rama for putting us in contact with him. Really lucked out with, with Rahis. And we also had Dominic McNeil come in and play the organ that you'll hear on the album. And it's, I mean, it's stunningly awesome how cool he laid down that track. And Mark Shapiro, who's just a fantastic guitarist. I mean, and, and such a cool guy. He came in, recorded with us for a couple of tracks as well. Mark Shapiro can play anything. It's it's insane. It was mind-boggling watching him work. And so really excited about all of the, the, uh, the musicians that we have involved in this project. Really took what we did and elevated it to a huge extent. World-class musicians on this album. Um, we also had the vocal work of Jazz, <laughs> Jazz Williams. He's a very good producer, but he goes into the studio. He'll go into the booth, and he'll lay down tracks. And it's even if he's just starting off screaming, uh, he knows how to produce so well that it sounds amazing by the time he's done. But, no, he's, he's actually a very good singer. He's an accomplished singer. But uh, some of it is actually just screaming that's been auto-tuned. It's, it's fantastically cool. Kathy Robbins, who sang on uh, Peace in the Mideast on our first album. She also sang uh, the hook for Still Kicking It. She's back in a big way on this album. We had Candace Theum uh, lay down some really incredible pipe work <laughs> with her vocals on one of the tracks. And then uh, Sanjita Singh, who... Uh, was uh, one of Rahis's students. She came in, she put down a hook for us, and Rahis actually laid down some vocals on it as well. It's fantastic. I mean, these are really world-class uh, acts that we're talking about. These are people that you should be looking up right now. Um, 
We also have the vocal work of Stella Ingram, Jesse Dylan Sorrells, and Mark McKinney on the uh, some of the comedy sketches there. And, of course, Chalkskin. Chalkskin's all over this, the, the four of us. So, it, I mean, we're really talking about something special. All these people coming together, you would never, ever expect um, such a collection of, of world-class acts coming in for a comedy hip-hop rap album. But that's just what we do. And, uh, and so this album really is, uh, it really is something that was um, uh, a high goal set for ourselves and for us to be so close to accomplishing that goal. And, and at this point, not really knowing how we're going to be able to finish it. We, uh, we've done all of the, the recording except for one song. <clears throat> We, uh, we just need to mix, master, and manufacture the album after that point. We're ready to go. This album's going to be 19 to 20 tracks long, and it's going to be awesome. It's been described as beastly. It's been suggested that it could be the best album, San Diego, uh, 2012, best rap album, San Diego, which is, you know, that's huge for us. Um, you know, those are things that other people have said about the album, so we're really excited about it. And what's great is that, you know, basically at the $25 level, we're just getting a pre-order from you. You know, we're asking you to, to pick up the album, which is going to be 15 when it comes out, and uh, and pick up Fresh Donuts, which is 10 right now. So for 25 bucks, you're just buying both of our albums. You're doing a pre-order for us, and, uh, and we want to make sure that you get those things. But, you know, we need to ensure that it's going to come out for you to be able to get it. So that's kind of a pre-order level. You know, everything leading up to the $100 level also really great 50 bucks you get the autograph pictures with us at 75 bucks you get the t-shirt at 100 bucks you get all those things and you get your name in the credits along with all of these really amazing acts which you know I'm so flattered that my name is gonna be with those people um, you know and I've put in an enormous amount of work and dedication into this obviously but but all of these people are such they just they eclipse you know my value on this album by by a huge degree so for my name to be on this album that's really such a point of pride for me and uh to be able to have that opportunity for you guys out there too i can't stress how awesome that is um and i'm really hoping that you can see the the value in that as well i'm going to put some links in the description here to the on the youtube page that will uh help you do a little bit of research about these people that I've just mentioned. Um, we've got two weeks until this campaign is over, uh, starting today. Today is payday for a lot of you guys, so really a great opportunity. They don't take the money right now. In fact, if we don't make our goal, we don't. they don't take the money at all. Um, you're only pledging to a project that, that's going to be a success. So if the project isn't successful, if the campaign isn't successful, then you don't give any money. Um, you keep that in your pocket. You don't give it to us. And so we're really um, stressing the importance. We're, we're a third of the way through, and we're 25% to goal. So we're a little bit behind where we uh, where we want to be. And obviously the um, the giving kind of trended down um, after the first couple of days. So it it's really important that from this point on, we're sharing this opportunity. We're we're really expressing. You know, from the bottom of my heart, I want to express gratitude to all the people that have helped out. And, that, um, you know, we're expressing the importance and the significance of this. I really do think it's a special opportunity for all of us involved and for all of you out there, too. Um, I'm really hoping that the album lives up to expectations. But so far, you know, it's blown away my expectations. So, anyways, uh, two weeks left on the campaign. Today's payday. Uh, I really hope to be hearing from some of you out there so that I can express my gratitude. Get the albums in your hands. How exciting is that? Uh, be able to to share what we've been working on for the last, you know, we've just we've been in the studio for the last three and a half months. And before that, we were working on the album. So it's, you know, it's been like a year of our lives working on this album. I want to be able to to finish it and to uh, to bring it out to you guys. So until next time, Behave yourselves.